the generally the way I check ovulation in women who are having uh, follicular monitoring for the assessment of ovulation, what do I do? I start on the day 9 of the menstrual cycle. Suppose she had period on the 1st of August, on 9th I'll do an ultrasound on the tummy and see if the follicle is growing. It would have reached the dominance by day 9. Then I'll do it on day 11, day 12, day 13 and I see on day uh, 12, 13 it's around 15, 16 millimeters. On day 14 it is 18 millimeters and I do it on day 16, I see the follicle has shrunk. If the follicle has shrunk, it's obviously meaning that the patient has ovulated. Hi, let's see the tests of ovulation. So when you want to see the tests of ovulation, you want to see the effects of progesterone. So progesterone is a thermogenic hormone. So the basal body temperature you can understand will increase by 0.5 degree Fahrenheit. Don't say centigrade, that's wrong. Then the serum LH will increase more than 15 international units. The serum progesterone will obviously increase. You must measure it on the day 21. That's the expected date of ovulation is 14. So after 6, 7 days, 8 days, the values are very high. You can measure them with a very significant association with ovulation. So serum progesterone on day 21, if it is more than 3 nanograms per ml, that is what is the ovulatory value. Now, serial ultrasonography, what is that known as? The follicular monitoring. Follicular monitoring is the usual way in the OPDs, the usual way, yes. The Generally the way I check ovulation in women who are having uh, follicular monitoring for the assessment of ovulation, what do I do? I start on the day 9 of the menstrual cycle. Suppose she had period on the 1st of August, on 9th I'll do an ultrasound on the tummy and see if the follicle is growing. It would have reached the dominance by day 9. Then I'll do it on day 11, day 12, day 13 and I see on day uh, 12, 13 it's around 15, 16 millimeters. On day 14 it is 18 millimeters and I do it on day 16, I see the follicle has shrunk. If the follicle has shrunk, it's obviously meaning that the patient has ovulated. So serial follicular monitoring by ultrasonography. You can also do the test of ovulation by the endometrial biopsy. Now, what about the endometrial biopsy? You will do this premenstrually. You will do this premenstrual endometrial biopsy. Suppose around day 21 you do it. Now, what do I want to see in the endometrial biopsy? Obviously, I want to see the secretory changes. Now, when I take a biopsy, you know how I do a biopsy, suppose there's a uterus, I go into the uterus with a small spoon-like an instrument, I go inside and scrape the endometrium and take it out and play it on the slide. Now, when I play it on the slide, the pathologist, when he examines the slide of the endometrium, you know, they're smart enough to look at any day's endometrium under the microscope and they can tell you that it is of which particular day. Yes, that's how the uh, pathologists are. That's how good the training is. So I can scrape out the endometrium of day 5 and say, and they can say, yes, menstruating endometrium. Or I can take it on day 20 and say, they can look at the uh, uh, secretory activity of the glands. They can see the uh, subnuclear vacuolation. They can see some early uh, lymphocytic infiltration. They know that it is around day 20 of the menstrual cycle. So when they look at the endometrium, they can actually tell us that what day it belongs to. So that's what I do. I take the endometrial biopsy, send it for the histopathology. So when I do a histopathology, let's say of uh, day 21 and the histopathological examination is reported as day 21. So I'm happy. That's what I wanted to see. That on day 21, the changes of the endometrium are appropriate for day 21. But sometimes, the histopathology report may come as a day 17. Now, I'm not liking the report. I ring up the pathologist and call him and ask him that, hello, I sent you the endometrium of day 21. Why have you reported day 17? And he'll tell back sometimes that, yes, doctor, the patient's endometrium which you send me, there are some progesterone changes, but not a day more than day 17 or day 18. The endometrial activity of progesterone is much lesser in this patient as expected. 
So yes, the pathologist has reported that on day 21, when I've done the sampling, the report is of day 17. That means the patient has actually ovulated, but the amount of progesterone which the corpus room is supposed to make is much lesser. It's only good for a day 17 progesterone by the histopathological examination. So yes, when the difference between observed and expected changes endometrium is more than equal to two days then I call it a luteal phase defect a luteal phase defect when the observed changes are lagging two or more days behind than the expected changes that means the patient has ovulated but the amount of progesterone which is formed is not as appropriate a luteal phase defect is a very well recognized cause of infertility then what else i can do with this when i want to do the effects of uh, progesterone for ovulation i can also do a uh, cervical mucus studies What about the cervical mucus studies? We discussed in the first uh, class that the cervical mucus is thin and watery, spin bucket is maximum and the ferning is maximum on the 14 day of the menstrual cycle. So does that tell you about ovulation? No. Now that's the problem. We always get this question wrong when we read our uh, average guidebooks. Please understand spin bucket and ferning I repeatedly told you is because of estrogens it's highest on the 14th day remember so if the spin bucket and ferning is because of estrogens and for ovulation i told you in the beginning of this topic what do i want to see i want to see the effects of progesterone isn't it i want to see the effects of progesterone so yes let's not confuse ourselves when i want to do cervical mucus studies i want to actually look for the effects of estrogen or progesterone i want to see the effects of progesterone when the woman ovulates the effects of progesterone on the cervical mucus I want to see. So yes, I do the PV on the day 8 and see cervical mucus is not so thin. On the day 10, somewhat thinner. Day 12, hmm, good thin. Day 14, thinnest. It is stretchable so much. On day 16 when I do the PV and examine the cervical mucus, it is thick now. Day 20, really, really thick. Now when the cervical mucus has become thick that means the patient has ovulated so please remember it's very important to understand cervical mucus studies are serial cervical mucus studies they are serial cervical mucus studies and very important to understand that loss of spin bucket and ferning Loss of spin bucket and ferning is what is ovulation. Spin bucket and ferning is never ovulation. Please understand, spin bucket and ferning is because of high estrogens. And once the ovulation has happened, then the effects of progesterone will come on the cervical mucus. So please, spin bucket and ferning is a good reliable method, but you have to do it serially over a time from let's say 8th day to the 16th, 17th day when the thin cervical mucus becomes the thick cervical mucus okay spin bucket and ferning is estrogen i have told you this repeatedly you can also do another test and that is the diagnostic laparoscopy now please that's too much of a test that's too big a test to diagnose something as simple as ovulation ovulation is regularly assessed in the opd by doing a follicular monitoring and you can also do it but do the assessment by the serum progesterone, the serum LH, the cervical mucus study is also fine, we can use that. But doing a laparoscopy just for assessing ovulation, we don't regularly do it. In fact, we never do it. Then what is the meaning of this statement? When I'm doing a laparoscopy, for whatever purpose, when I'm doing a laparoscopy and on the ovary, I see a yellowish puncta, a yellowish uh, hole on the ovary, that tells me that this patient has made a corpus luteum and this yellow part is the corpus luteum and this punctum is the place where the oocyte has gone out. So then when I look at an ovary, 
that gives me an evidence that the patient has ovulated. I'm not doing a laparoscopy uh, for every month to diagnose ovulation. Please, we don't never do it, okay? It's one of the good tests to assess the ovulation. But then, when do we do it? We don't deliberately do a laparoscopy just to diagnose ovulation, okay? While doing it and you see an ovary which has a yellowish punctum, we know that the patient has ovulated. Otherwise, the regular way of diagnosing ovulation is by the follicular monitoring in the outpatient department, all right?